to you. Mm-hmm. And uh, <coughs> yeah. please help with this. Yes, I will. <coughs> yeah, so actually, as Vera said, like uh, we are one of these examples. We've been doing beetroot for seven years, and uh, we have kind of been working with self-management from the beginning, but like consciously only for the last three, three and a half years, something like that. Uh, so. Uh, mm. um, I don't know how to get in there. Um, <laughs> Sorry for the technical part. We didn't. And we've been working like since we. Um, so for the last three, three and a half years, when we've been working consciously, we've been working with uh, Vera in different setups and also with uh, TUF leadership uh, in okay. Sweden. Clicker, sorry, yes. um, and um, mm-hmm. and also uh, I could also say we are two founders of uh, Beetroot. Uh, second founder here is Gustav. Mm-hmm. He's also here. Mm-hmm. He can also answer questions uh, afterwards. And there are also other many other Beetroots. Or not many, but some other Beetroots. More educated. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So I will just I will start with a story, like background, so you understand where we came from, who we are, a little bit of what the company do, but then I will start to try to focus more on how we how we work um, with self management and other things aspects related to that. So. Who we are? So we are uh, me and Gustav. We are Swedes. So we met in university, um, and we had like a similar interest for Eastern Europe. So we had started to learn Russian language, and we were also running different entrepreneurial projects. And we kind of had an idea that we wanted to move somewhere and set up a business that gave social impact in some way. But we didn't know in what what field or in what country actually. So we we evaluated Russia, Belarus, uh, Ukraine, and uh, Moldova. Uh, and uh, we kind of uh, like b- on both based on like ob- objective like we felt that the potential is is really really good and also subjective factors such we when we came to Ukraine we felt that this is like a really like uh, open hungry society with active uh, active people and uh, in a transformation and this was like even like before all of Maidan and all of that this was in 2002 but we f- kind of felt a vibe so we decided to uh, move and try things out um, and from the beginning it looked like this um, <laughs> so this is our first business trip we had a Rigoli with uh, which we drew from uh, St. Petersburg I picked up Gustav who studied in Moscow at the time and then we had our first uh, beetroot office uh, uh, where we stayed for some time and we were experimenting and learning learning about Ukraine learning about the IT field and so on and uh, yes this is our like six years birthday now it's already seven year like we will celebrate this weekend actually. Uh, so now we are actually a team of uh, more than 350 people. Or you could say an ecosystem, because we tr- I want to see it like an ecosystem in the sense that we have different parts of, of what we do that are sort of adding different parts of value to what we do. Uh, so in very short, like uh, what we do is uh, we do IT development in what we call dedicated teams. So it means that we help companies in 20 different countries with building software teams who typically work with product development for customers in Sweden, Israel, the UK, US, and so on. And we also do that more on a sort of project basis uh, where we deliver a full solution, um, both in house but also with a network of partner teams in Ukraine and Moldova mainly. Uh, a bit Belarus as well. And we have Beetroot Academy. And Beetroot Academy is like a, a whole like separate organization. Um, which is very distributed in many locations, so it's 16 locations already. Uh, and basically it's like we provide practical IT education, or you could say we provide act- practical courses uh, making you ready for the digital economy, um, with already more than, uh, uh, yeah, more than 1,000 people of our graduates work in the IT industry in Ukraine. So around February, March next year, we will have educated 1% of all it in Ukraine if we continue in this speed. Um, um, and also, uh, to mention with B- Beetroot Academy, it's, um, so Beetroot is a commercial structure, but with social goals. And Beetroot Academy is a Blagatritini fund, but based on a social, uh, social enterprise model, meaning that it's built up to have a long-term financial self-sustainability, but not profit. Um, So the goal is, but the goal in both of what we do is sort of impact related. So just to be very simple, like um, 
uh, what we like the, the when we came here like with nothing um, except from some Swedish student scholarship because I was still a student at the time um, we we basically the idea was kind of like to collect good people and do good things uh, cook good bodge uh, and uh, and uh, of course this this developed over time but one of the things uh, this is like a very old slide this is like six years old so before we knew that there were like this world movement of self-management and so on but this was like our idea based on that we had seen uh, how different projects works when we work with partner teams and we saw that most often when f projects fail they fail because of communication in one way or another like it's this information that travels up and up and down in hierarchy um, and we thought okay but let's take away all the middle layers let's turn it upside down like reverse the hierarchy and uh, connect sort of team and client, integrate them rather than put layers in between, and see the management team uh, more like a support function. So we are there to support the organization, like those who create value in the team, to, to work um, in, a, in an efficient way. And uh, so one of the aspects of this, of course, like if you have a pyramid, and most organizations are a pyramid in one way or another, you, uh, the bigger the organization becomes, the slower it becomes because these decisions travel further and further and it becomes like like Ukrizalis Nisha has like 38 levels of management or something that's like impossible to get anything uh, solved. Um, while if you don't have it, if you have a direct connection, in our case then with teams of developers towards the client, you have, uh, we notice that people get a much better sense of responsibility towards uh, things. Um, so in if you see that green management part in I will not go like very deep to it but if you um, yeah from our inside like uh, we don't have that structure we have it's more like a cake so it's like a cluster based where you have different functions and with having that um, so with having that that has different impacts on how you do things of course uh, so in this case you don't have like the career stairs typically so you don't grow yeah uh, you, you grow more on the but you have a lot of space to grow because you can grow pretty much anywhere you want uh, in, a, in the organization. And this, I mean, uh, one of the first things that most people think like this sounds very like chaotic. And it's actually, the, f the thing we're doing this is if it should work, you actually have to do it more structured than, than in a classic in a hier hierarchical organization, you always know where to go, you go to the boss and so on. So if when doing this, even though if the base of it is having the right culture, uh, you still will need to implement different structures for this to, to work out. Um, and uh, yeah, it was mentioned about some book. Have someone here read Reinventing Organizations or Organizatio Maibutni? Yes, the key. Yeah, we, so I had not read this when we started. Uh, well, it was launched, I think, in 2014, the book. But when I was having approximately this kind of presentations at some places, people started telling me, oh, you probably read this book and wanted to do your company or like build your company in that way. Uh, so of course I went and read the book and I realized uh, doing that that uh, this is really cool uh, because there is this whole like companies in different cultures in different parts of the world who are experimenting with these models and also achieving good results and it was a very good time because in 2016 we were just about like we was just started to grow very like exponentially and what you do when you're a young entrepreneur you grow exponentially you start to go to like okay what did we learn in business school like okay we need to implement this kpi we need to like uh, create this management role so it was in a very like time where we sort of could have left this uh, self-management paradigm and instead we decided to sort of go almost all in on it and when uh, when having this sort of uh, yes call it self-management organization or it's very important with like the engagement of people you and one of the components you usually talk is like evolutionary purpose like to have something bigger that you aim for and this is something in beetroot we define this uh together like with a team of like not every everyone but say 50 people who like uh, worked out that this this is what we want we want to be the most uh social impactful it company in ukraine and what does it mean, social impact? It can be many different things. Uh, it can mean hard factors and soft factors. We have to talk about hard factors, it can be contributing to the economy, helping individuals uh, in the academy. It's very clearly like measurable with students and so on. But it can also be like soft factors, like 
the mindset or, of people you work with or uh, partners, not even in the, the team and so on. Um, so we are sort of we set this like big vision and it's like this. Yes, we are we are an IT company and we provide services that are very similar to many other IT companies, but we do it with this purpose in the back of our mind when we take various decisions. Um, and then we have also sort of we have worked through through many workshops and discussions and so on. This takes time. We work through different sets of values. Uh, the most important one, I think, for us, and that's have been from the very beginning as well, like it's trust. Uh, to really like believe in people's uh, potential and almost like shock people with trust. Like you, you want people to start to work in business. Like wow, I've never been so trusted in my whole life before. That's then we have achieved something. And what usually happens then is not that things fall apart, but the other like the other way around that people really start to feel uh, responsibility. So I've been I'm so trusted and now I'm responsible for it. And responsible is, I mean, on many different levels, but one of the things is like to um, sort of have the feeling that if, if I don't do this, uh, who, who else will do it? Like, and, and of course, this is, uh, this is a big, uh, like this trust and responsibility is a big freedom, but it's also, it can also be a big like stress factor. It's not like, not, not something that m everyone are used to, or, or, so you need to have that, you need to have this sort of adult uh, relationship to things. And it's not always easy um, uh, to leave your ego at home. Uh, ego is a Russian word as well, yeah. Ego, yeah. Um, so the idea with that is that you, when you are in a meeting and discuss things, that you shouldn't, re you're not representing like yourself or your like personal egoistic goals or something like that. You're representing what you think uh, that the company uh, needs. This is actually it sounds like something basic, but it's actually a very it happens and it's very hard like I've, I've even I mean also for myself like this is something that the ego very often like pops up in the room and you have, to have to, if you're aware of that you can sort of spot like oh now your ego is talking like it's not it's not it's not your best of mind or like um, and then to bring your whole self to work like wholeness is called selflessness I think um, like the idea that we don't wear like a work like a corporate mask uh, when we come to work but you are yourself you bring your whole self to work like with all your individual specific yeah specificities and, and so on and uh, we have different ways to of course one of them is just culture but we have various ways to sort of achieve it we we in beetroot we call it home of great teams so we try to make it like very like Damashni atmosphere with tapushki and everyone is uh nati uh, and so on and uh yeah share wins and face but also like transparency so we try to be very transparent. Like if someone asks me about how our finances looks, I would answer and so on. Although I would say that this of all our values, maybe this is one that we need to work with most, not because we are not transparent, but because we are not always so good at sharing all the information. So this is like um, something to work on. And the last one, but not least important, uh, take care of yourself and the planet, like sustainability in everything you do. So not sustainability in how you work like do do we work in a way so that we burn out in half a year or do we work in a way that we can be efficient for 10 years or uh, financially like not don't take like short-term financial decisions um, and also for the planet like the, we yeah try to as much as possible like uh, uh, avoid affecting our environmental negative and so on um, yeah, like adult, adult, I mean, uh, Karin already mentioned it, I think Vera will also talk about it more, but this is a like underlying very important uh, factor and also one of the more challenging ones because this, you can see that this uh, old, um, or this, this other paradigm, they are so deeply rooted in, in, in all of us. In, in So to be able to sort of let go of this parent-child uh, process is uh, one of the more challenging things um, there I mean there are like many 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 examples of like uh, processes and things that we do and you can ask questions after so on but I will just mention like two <coughs> very briefly um, so one question one when you start to talk about self-management you very fast come to okay how do we make decisions and uh, this is actually something that we have worked and are still working with very much but as a sort of on a top uh, like a high level um, 
ID of wh what we are trying to achieve, it, uh, you can divide it basically in three different ways. The classical hierarchical way, which is clear, like the boss decides, uh, no matter if he's right or wrong, uh, and so on. Um, and then you have like a very, actually very common in Swedish organizations, a con like con kind of consensus model. So basically, like we agree when everybody agrees, and if not everybody agreed, we didn't agree on anything, right? Which is very good in terms of synchronization of uh, teams, but very bad in terms of speed of decision making because very often these decisions are not taken or taken extremely slowly. So what we try to do, and, and what we have a process for, is what we call advice process. So the idea that everybody has authorities to take decisions specifically in your role, but also in, in, in general in the organization. Everybody can take an initiative, take a decision. Um, and you are supposed to follow an advice process. It means that you take advice from those people affected by decision or who could have a good input on that decision. Uh, and then you take a decision. So you don't need consensus. You take a decision based on this, and then you're motivated. <coughs> and then you get uh, sort of, OK, you get sort of general acceptance from. And then. Um, yeah, through, I thought about the carrot on the horizon, sort of the big long-term ID, but we have also broken that down into a uh, three years plan and one years plan, which is divided into uh, the different units in the team. So they're like, not like top down, but the other way around. So you're setting, because we have this sort of top division and then each team build up their, um, their goals based on that, uh, on a three year and one, and then even on an individual level in the end. So you have, in a way, like you have every individual in the team, theoretically at least, have this sort of connection to the big goal in the future, to my sort of work here and now. And yeah, <laughs> we just recently um, received um, an award, you can say, and a certificate from it is an Ameri American organization or a global organization based in America called World Blue, who basically they work with different companies who work with uh, uh, human centered and democratic centered uh, organizations. Uh, and they went in very deeply into Beatrice with surveys and questions and so on. And we got this certificate, and they also gave us sort of an like what to work on. So we understood that we are very like scored extremely high on sort of freedom, democracy, um, and so on. And we scored slightly lower on uh, uh, processes and um, transparency and so on. So there's like room, sort of room to improve. Um, and this is, I think, this is my final slide. Um, so. Challenges, yeah. Um, so basically, I mean, this is not like uh, sort of a religious meeting where we're trying to ex tell everyone to join our club of self-managed teams or something <laughs> like that. But it's just like an example, uh, and, and I think I mean we are also not sort of religious internally. We see we see pros and cons. Um, I would say mainly pros. Uh, but I think if to take like the main uh, the main pros of of doing this. Uh, it's it's really creates like a uh, feeling of freedom uh, in the team and a feeling of that you can each and everyone can develop and as an organization you can also see that instead of like one small leading group taking this strategic decision you can see parallel processes going on all the time which makes actually the organization very you could call it adaptable or agile um, and um, yeah this I guess that's the main things but there are also of course uh, challenges. Uh, so we talked about the roles and so on, in, and setting the the roles. I mean, like because you still need roles and spheres of responsibility and so on. That's relatively easy. Uh, it needs some work, but it's very doable. The the challenging part and why it's so important to st start with the culture. It's the uh, accountability because uh, you realize when you work with this that this like paradigm of I'm doing this to make my boss happy. It's it's very strong. Like and. Uh, and what you need to achieve, and what we are like working with all the time, it's this accountability, uh, where you're accountable not to your boss, but you're accountable to sort of the mission, the organization, but also to everyone in that team. So you have more of a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, feedback uh, system than uh, top top-down. Um, 
And then, I mean, also challenges like not everybody likes it. And uh, that you, you, you think when, we, when you build this, if you want to build this organization or switch organization, you will, especially if you switch it, I think that you will see that some people will sort of love it and will grow up. And I think uh, they, they say usually that when companies switch from a more classical model to this, usually you lose like 20% of your team who are not comfortable with, with uh, switching to this way of doing things. Um, that's more or less it. Uh, just one more time, underline what Karin said also, that uh, starting, with, starting with the culture as a fundament and, uh, and then building structures based on that. Because I think I've also <coughs> seen various examples of companies who try to jump into, okay, we want it to be self-managed, and then you take this, um, what's called holacracy, and you sort of implement every step of it. And if you do that without having the culture for it in place, you, you can, I think, screw up pretty bad. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I just wanted to summarize before we.